Be sure and stay tuned for the MVP award at the conclusion of the game. We're about to get into the final period. Playing a little basketball here, but here's a young man that played with a football of a, a ball of another configuration. <laughs> football type. Bill Mathis, the former New York Jet who lives in this area and a big sports fan. Hubie Brown gave him his Billy Graham talk between quarters. I'm sure that he's told his ball club just exactly what they've got to do to stay in, in the lead or to maintain or to stay in contention this basketball game going down this stretch. And they've got to have that penetration. Hawes has to continue to do an outstanding job on the board. Ernie Grunfeld came down, took the shot, and made it look easy. That is Grunfeld's first bucket of the game. So Milwaukee claims the lead back at 71 to 70. Charlie Chris. And the Hawks again have been moving since he came off the bench in the third quarter. He hasn't scored that much, but he somehow fired him up. Foul is on Bridgman. Foul is on Bridgman. This is what happens when you get a guy that continues to move like uh, Mac Miller's doing. He's moving around inside, and, they, and they're looking for him because he can hit with either left or right-handed hooks. Watch closely to see if Milwaukee gets into foul trouble again, as they did in the third quarter. Nice shot by Eddie Johnson. Boy, he's come to life out here, hasn't he? And there's a steal by little Charlie Chris. Marcus Johnson grabs the rebound. So it's Atlanta leading by 172-71 early in the final period of play. Winters trying to get open. Nice pass to Gianelli underneath. He was off balance, couldn't put it up. He threw a brick up there. That's what he did. <laughs> Here he's got good inside position. He gets a good rebound. Shots taken. He's got good inside position. He gets a good rebound. Instead of taking his time, he just throws the ball back up. Plus, he pushes off also, I think. Gianelli now has five personal fouls. McMillan comes out of the game, and John Brown comes in for Atlanta. Here come the Hawks, leading by one. That's their biggest lead since the first quarter. Frank, they're confident. They feel good. They feel that they can win this ball game now. They're showing it out here. They're going out and attacking things. Winner's going for the steal. Chris got it back, and we're going to have a jump ball. Ooh, I don't blame Brian. He's got a legitimate beef right here because Brown all but dove and tackled him. He's telling him about it, too. You can hear him. We don't want to hear him too good. <laughs> Gianelli down to Bridgman. His pass is deflected and knocked out of bounds by Eddie Johnson. He had the right idea, but it just didn't come through. That's all. He was looking for the loud pass for the stuff. Marcus Johnson to inbound it. Milwaukee trailing by one. Winters got the open shot from 22 feet. That's his shot. And you can't give him that either, boy. And it's time for him to start tuning him up again because he's been idle for a while. That's his first basket of the second half. He scored 10 at halftime. Now his 12 for the game, and Milwaukee has the one-point advantage. Two teams fighting for a spot in the playoffs. And they need this one badly. Both of them do. Steve Hawes is from outside. Nice touch for the big man. Well, he's having a fine evening here. 14 points for Hawes on a ton of rebounds. And Atlanta's out in front, 74-73. Winners missing. Grenfell trying to save it and does so off John Brown. Excellent save here for the simple fact is he was held before he could even go after the ball. Grenfell will set up the out of bounds. 9.55 left to play in the game. Going to be another nail biter. It looks like it, too. Bucks are no strangers to close games with all the overtime games they played recently. Marcus Johnson again making it look easy. And he seems to just score at will. I mean, any place on the floor he wants to go, they're not fighting him to keep him out of position or anything. They're just giving it to him. No weak side help or anything. Marcus Johnson now has 28 points. Milwaukee 75, Atlanta 74. John Brown picked up by Grunfeld trying to get it inside to Hawes. Can't. Finally gets it to Chris and little Charlie. A little spin on it, but wouldn't fall. Almost. That's what you call protecting the ball with the body and getting the shot off. Hawes with the steal, but he walked. Fortunately for Milwaukee that he did walk because little Charlie Chris was at half court and ready to take off. You know, Charlie at 5'8 can slam dunk pretty good. If he'd have slam dunk, I think I'd have got up and walked out of here, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Don Nelson. He said, how many more of these close games are we going to have? Timeout <laughs> called by the Hawks. 
We'll be back at the Omni in Atlanta in just a moment. Zebco puts it on the line with the Zebco Omega 33 XBL. Smooth, powerful, ball bearing drive, ultra sensitive drag, and an interchangeable handle for right or left hand retrieve. The Zebco Omega 33 XBL. Just one of the Zebco Omegas. Made in America by Zebco. The folks you fish with. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hello, Costler. Hi, Dad. I heard a rumor you finally passed the bar exam. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Frank. So Frank, well, the prime ribs and a couple of low and brown. Prime ribs? Low and brown? What are you doing? Divine dinner for the guy who put me through law school? When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Here's to good friends. Let it be low and brown. Good friends. Showgirls of the MGM Grand for Color Track by RCA. Do my flesh tones look right to you? Are my feathers green? Is my gown purple? If these colors don't look right to you, you should know about Color Track from RCA. It locks in all the colors, including flesh tones. Getting the color right is what Color Track is all about. Before you see the color, the Color Track system grabs it, aligns it, defines it, sharpens it, tones it, and locks the color on track. RCA is making television better and better. Next Sunday, March 19th at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents the World Skate Challenge with JoJo Starbuck, Janet Lynn, and more superstars of the ice competing in a unique format. That's the World Skate Challenge next Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Back at the Omni in Atlanta, another hot game in Denver. Let's go to Brent Musburger and Keith Erickson. Welcome now. Those of you who are watching Milwaukee and Atlanta, you're very interested in what Chicago is doing. They've come to the free throw line. Kazi Russell, they trail Denver 83 to 80. Make it 83 81. And Keith Erickson, it has come to that tough time for Chicago. Mickey Johnson with five fouls on the bench. And they've got to go now with Derek Dickey and Kazi Russell alongside Artis Gilmore. Seven minutes. It's a one-point game. David Thompson has been his usual magnificent show. Timeout. Uh, time Thompson has scored 28 points. Well, they go over to huddle around Murray Brown. Denver Nuggets, 657 to go. 83-82 Nuggets. All right, thank you very much, Brent. Back once again at the Omni in Atlanta. John Gianelli has just fouled out of the game for the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, fouling Steve Hawes in the act of shooting. Milwaukee leading by one, and now it's time. Well, the problem has been here now that uh, the Hawks have not been giving uh, the Bucks very many uh, opportunities to score at all. They're giving them one shot down at the other end of the ball court, and the Bucks are continuing to make uh, those turnovers out there, which are hurting them now. And they're about to get in foul trouble again. Milwaukee has three team fouls, and Atlanta none here in the fourth quarter, which is the way it was in the third period. There's an easy steal by Armand Hill. That's two. Hill gets his fourth basket. And Atlanta has its biggest lead of the second half, 78-75. Another steal by Hill. I believe they're calling a backcourt foul on Rumfield. Yes. <laughs> Marcus Johnson might be hurt out here. Here it is. Rumfield comes down. Hill sneaks around, leaves his man Marcus Johnson, goes for the steal. Grunfield grabs him and holds him right here. So Grunfield picks up his fourth personal foul, and Marcus Johnson came away from that old fracas limping slightly. Armand Hill on the free throw line, an 85% free throw shooter on the season. Well, they've got that penetration that we've been talking about for three quarters now, three and a half almost, and uh, it's starting to pay off for them. Plus, they're not making the mistakes. They're forcing the Bucks to turn the ball over. And this is what's hurting the Bucks right now. They're not penetrating. They're not taking the ball inside like they were doing. 13 points for Armand Hill, and Atlanta now with a five-point lead. Chris almost made another steal. Anything on the floor they're going after. Marcus Johnson taking things into his own hands. Can't hit underneath. Field, five fouls. 
That's number five on Ernie Grunfield going after that rebound. It's a good good hustling effort by Grumfield. You don't really condemn a guy when he gets an offensive foul, really, because he's crashing the boards and trying to do a job. He's keyed up, and uh, he's made a couple of mistakes, and so he's trying to come back. Lloyd Walton comes into the game for Milwaukee, but now, as in the third period, the Hawks are killing the Bucks on the free throw line. They're in the penalty the rest of the game, and Atlanta has not had a single foul called on it here in the final quarter. Which is the same situation we had up until about two minutes left to play in the third quarter. Excuse me, Frank, but this man here is not going to miss him more than likely because he's an excellent free throw shooter. He's three out of three from the line. Tom McMillan. Six-point lead for Atlanta. Shoots 76% on the year from the free throw line. Now the Bucks got to come down, settle down, get back into their game because it's going to be tough now. They're pressing everything on the floor. They're double teaming. They're overplaying. They should have did it the first part of the game. They put in Jim Akins for the first time in the game. And by the way, Marcus Johnson is now playing a guard with Walton. Foul is on Chris. This is a questionable call right here. I'm going to look at this one myself. He goes down. Walton has got the man. He goes up. He hits the ball right here. Walton, as a matter of fact, looks like he lost the ball out there. Do we see that back on his hand? UB Brown letting the officials know what he thinks of that call. That's Walton's first point of the game. Don't forget the Doral Open follows NBA basketball on CBS. Last we heard, Tom Weisskopf is in the lead by a couple of shots. 82-77, Atlanta by five. We've got seven minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Armand Hill wheeling around Brian Winters and Akins with a good block. Akins recovered it, got it back to Winters. That's what the big man's supposed to do when he blocks a shot. He blocks it and saves it, keeps it in bound. He's done his job. Pass underneath intended for Grunfeld and picked off by McMillan. Grunfeld working with five fouls on him now as Armand Hill brings it across the center line. He's the quarterback, former number one draft choice of the Atlanta Hawks. They haven't done well in signing the number one picks in recent years. A couple of years ago, they had David Thompson and Marvin Webster drafted. McMillan, big man coming outside and playing guard. This is when you got that confidence that they didn't have before. Now they're coming out, they're bumping them. Those shots are going in, whereas they weren't falling in the first half. Seven-point lead, and the Hawks are doing it without John Drew, who's sidelined with a bad ankle. Akins driving on Hawes. And Hawes will pick up his third personal foul. Well, they don't really want to lose Hawes right now. He's been the uh, backboard for this ball club so far. As far as rebounding and scoring, he's got 14 points, equal amount of rebounds, and he's uh, probably got three or four block shots in this game. Atlanta's picked up three quick personal fouls here in a space of about a minute and a half. They cooled uh, Marcus Johnson off in a hurry. He had 28 points, 12 of 16 from the field. His high is 31, and uh, we've got better than uh, six minutes to go in this game yet, so I was looking for him to get 40. That young man, you're looking at the uh, looking on the bench there was John Drew, the uh, Hawk star who sprained his ankle against Portland Friday night. They hope to get him back by Thursday night when they play Golden State. I can sympathize with him right now because I know the feeling. His team's winning, and he feels that he could add something to him. Tom McMillan. Not bad. 16 points for the former Maryland All-American. Here's Johnson. Off to Grunfeld, got the clear shot, and he hits it. And the bucket will go. Foul on McMillan. Ernie Grunfeld coming through the big bucket. He's a good player. The man was due to get off. You know, he'd been coming down, hustling. He got five fouls, and then he took a good shot, and the big man just carried right into him. So Could Grunfeld with a chance now to convert the three-pointer, which would give him five on the afternoon and bring Milwaukee to within five points. 6.28 left to play in the game. Frank Lieber along with a couple of mistakes, and so he's trying to come back. Lloyd Walton comes into the game for Milwaukee, but now, as in the third period, the Hawks are killing the Bucks on the free throw line. They're in the penalty the rest of the game, and Atlanta has not had a single foul called on it here in the final quarter, which is the same situation we had up until about two minutes left to play in the third quarter. Excuse me, Frank, but this man here is not going to miss him more than likely because he's an excellent free throw shooter. He's three out of three from the line. Tom McMillan, six-point lead for Atlanta. 
Shoots 76 percent on the year from the free throw line. Now the Bucks got to come down, settle down, get back into their game because it's going to be tough now. They're pressing everything on the floor. They're double teaming. They're overplaying. They should have did it the first part of the game. They put in Jim Akins for the first time in the game. And by the way, Marcus Johnson is now playing a guard with Walton. Foul is on Chris. This is a questionable call right here. I'm going to look at this one myself. He goes down. Walton has got the man. He goes up. He hits the ball right here. Walton, as a matter of fact, looks like he lost the ball out there. Can we see that back on his hand? Hubie Brown letting the officials know what he thinks of that call. That's Walton's first point of the game. Don't forget the Doral Open follows NBA basketball on CBS. As we heard, Tom Weisskopf is in the lead by a couple of shots. 82-77, Atlanta by five. We've got seven minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Armand Hill wheeling around Brian Winters and Akins with a good block. Akins recovered it, got it back to Winters. That's what the big man's supposed to do when he blocks a shot. He blocks it and saves it, keeps it in bound. He's done his job. Pass underneath intended for Grunfeld and picked off by McMillan. Grunfeld working with five fouls on him now as Armand Hill brings it across the center line. He's the quarterback, former number one draft choice of the Atlanta Hawks. They haven't done well in signing the number one picks in recent years. A couple of years ago, they had David Thompson and Marvin Webster drafted. McMillan. Big man coming outside and playing guard. This is when you got that confidence that they didn't have before. Now they're coming out, they're bumping them. Those shots are going in, whereas they weren't falling in the first half. Seven-point lead, and the Hawks are doing it without John Drew, who's sidelined with a bad ankle. Akins driving on Hawes. And Hawes will pick up his third personal foul. Well, they don't really want to lose Hawes right now. He's been the uh, backboard for this ball club so far. As far as rebounding and scoring, he's got 14 points, equal amount of rebounds, and he's uh, probably got three or four block shots in this game. Atlanta's picked up three quick personal fouls here in a space of about a minute and a half. They cooled uh, Marcus Johnson off in a hurry. He had 28 points, 12 of 16 from the field. His high is 31, and uh, we've got better than uh, six minutes to go in this game yet, so I was looking for him to get 40. That young man, you're looking at the uh, looking on the bench there was John Drew, the uh, Hawk star who sprained his ankle against Portland Friday night. They hope to get him back by Thursday night when they play Golden State. I can sympathize with him right now because I know the feeling. His team's winning, and he feels that he could add something to him. Tom McMillan. Not bad. 16 points for the former Maryland All-American. Here's Johnson. Off to Grunfeld. Got the clear shot, and he hits it. And the bucket will go. Wow, well, McMillan. Ernie Grunfeld coming through with a big bucket. He's a good player. The man was due to get off. You know, he'd been coming down, hustling. He had five fouls, and then he took a good shot, and the big man just carried right into him. So Could Grunfeld with a chance now to convert the three-pointer, which would give him five on the afternoon and bring... Milwaukee to within five points. 6.28 left to play in the game. Frank Lieber along with Gus Johnson from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. NBA basketball with the playoffs at stake. And they don't want to lose McMillan right now because he's got a hot hand for him. So he's got 15 points and he's playing. A Rumfield's gone. Grunfeld has just fouled out of the game. He was playing behind John Brown and gave Brown an extra nudge, and that is six. Well, the former Tennessee All-American. So the Bucks lose their second player via the foul route. Gianelli fouled out earlier. It's a good call by the ref. It was a mismatch in the first place. Brumfield's looking. He's got his arm around the guy, hugging him. They're doing the bear waltz out here. And I'm he's complaining. Yeah, I'm surprised he complained <laughs> that much. <laughs> Don't believe it. John Brown wants to towel off before... He steps to the free throw line here. Atlanta with the advantage of the penalty the rest of the way. Atlanta also has three fouls against it. So they've still got a slight cushion there. Holly Johnson, number 27, has come back into the game, and they are taking McMillan out to give him a rest. Well, I think it's a well-deserved rest, too, Frank. And uh, as uh, stats go, uh, they're not that impressive, but... Uh, They've got six players in double figures. McMillan 
with 16 points in the afternoon. John Brown converting one out of two from the line. Atlanta leading by six. And Milwaukee needs to find the hot hand here. Walton driving on Chris all the way underneath. Beautiful shot. Little man, there's a penetration again. Once they get that, it causes the offense to break down. If somebody sloughs and picks him up, he misses off to the big man for the easy lift. But he took it all away. That trims the lead to four. That's Walton's first bucket. Here's Chris going 90 to nothing underneath. Out to Ollie Johnson who missed the shot. Akins with the rebound. Clears it out to Brian Winters. Alex English working against John Brown. Walton goes baseline and comes back outside to Johnson. Johnson, 12-footer. Armand Hill getting the rebound. Johnson has cooled off now. Yes, he, he has. He has 28 points, and his previous career high this year was 31. So he's on the verge of uh, breaking his own career mark in his rookie year. Great rookie year. Hawes decides not to go at the shot, and the little man, Chris. Anything he does from here on out, they're going to bring the house down. I think if he'd kick the ball up in the stands, they'd cheer right now. That's his first bucket of the second half. He now has 17 points. Walton, 16-footer. Akins had a hand on it, couldn't hold it. Brown, outlet pass down to Armand Hill. Chris from the other corner. I believe we've got a technical call on the Milwaukee bench. I don't blame him. It's getting pretty rough out there. I think it's time the officials got the game back under control again because this is when tempers start to flare. It's a pretty close game right now, and we don't want to see anybody get hurt out of it. So I think it was a very good call. Don Nelson and Hubie Brown, they've both been kind of irate. Don Nelson on his feet. Costing the Bucks a technical. Then Armand Hill who is the top Atlanta free throw shooter, averages 85% from the line. Very costly technical foul right now. This is when a coach has to try to reframe him or restrain himself from uh, getting a technical foul. 90 to 83, Atlanta down by 12 and one point in the big man. 6'8", Hawes makes the steal. Off Walden and here comes Atlanta. Now that's not paying very much attention to your job. He's a guard and he let a guy like Hawes knock the ball right out of his hand. Chris to Brown. He caught the second foul right here on Brian Winters. He didn't get the first one. Let's see it. Foul on Armand Hill, his third. The foul is called on Armand Hill. That's he, his third. He missed the first one down there that time. They had a little bumping match going. Walton off to Winters. Winters has got to hit that shot if Milwaukee's going to come back. Aikens fighting hard underneath. Trying to put up the rebound, and he's fouled. Good hustle by Eakins in here. Just being so big, he didn't have to really jump that high, but he got it, and he just didn't have any place to go with it because they were all around him. Now, that's four on Hill. That was on Armand Hill, too. So here's Eakins. He is the best free throw shooter percentage-wise on the Milwaukee team. He's got 86% on the year. Of course, he hasn't shot that many because he hasn't played that much. But he's a good sound ball player, though. He's smart. You know, he doesn't have the quickness and leaping ability, but he can pick out things and sort it out. Three out of three. From the free throw line for Akins. Five-point Atlanta advantage just under four minutes. Left to play. Hawes driving. Off to Brown, who is double-teamed. English is on him. Gets it back out to Hawes. With two seconds to go on the shot clock, he let that desperation shot fly. Watch you know, the air ball. The thing that's got me puzzled is they've got Benson sitting over there on the bench. They're not getting any scoring from any of their centers, and uh, I'm sure he can come in and plug up the middle a lot better than he can spin right now. English missing that shot. And the Hawks slow it down as they come down. Armand Hill takes a look at Hubie Brown, who's on his feet in front of the Atlanta bench. I think. Here's Hill. I thought perhaps Don Nelson was reading your mind there and going for Benson off the bench, but he's going to come in with Myers, who hasn't okay. played the entire game because of the flu. Going baseline right here. He tries to beat him down through there. The man's already established his position. And here he goes, coming down through here with a foul. 
right down baseline. He's already there. They must want this win pretty bad because Myers is supposed to be pretty sick, you know, and they're bringing him back in the ball game. He hasn't come in at all. There's ice up on the meet here. He has to be stiff from sitting for three quarters plus. So Dave Myers making his first appearance of the game with three minutes and five seconds to go. Winners. Hey, Milwaukee can't fire a shot here. Winners, who is normally deadly from that area of the floor, has missed two or three. Atlanta with a five-point advantage with two minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Charlie Chris. Shot clock down to five. And we get a whistle away from the ball. Now we'll tell you what happened when we come back after the timeout. Look at Don Nelson. Dive out here in Atlanta. Back in just one moment. Oh. These 1,700 one-gallon gas cans reach up to the highest suspension bridge in the world, demonstrating just one advantage of the new Chevy Chevette. If the car you drive now has an average EPA combined city highway mileage estimate of 17 miles to a gallon of gas, and you switch to a Chevy Chevette with its higher mileage, you might save up to this much gas, as much as 1,700 gallons over five years of normal driving. 1,700 gallons, enough to reach from the bottom of Royal Gorge to the bridge above and then some. If your business takes you to the heart of a city, there's nothing like Hilton Rainbow Service. In Manhattan, it's right on Park Avenue at the Waldorf Astoria. Or if your business is pleasure, you'll find Rainbow Service at the fabulous Las Vegas Hilton and on beautiful Waikiki at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Hilton Rainbow Service. You'll find it at the heart of every Hilton, in the heart of most every city. Let the Hilton Rainbow brighten your day. Enjoying the trip in your GM car? Oh, yes. Want to keep that great GM feeling? Oh, yes. Then oh. shake hands with Mr. Goodwrench. He's dedicated to improved customer care at more than 6,000 participating GM dealers. You want genuine GM parts. You want your car fixed right on time. That's what I want, too. Caring about your GM car helps keep me in business. Keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Frank Labor with Gus Johnson back at the Omni in Atlanta, where we have two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this NBA game between the Atlanta Hawks and the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee up by four at halftime and up by 12 in the second period. But Atlanta has come on to take the play away from the Bucks, even without their top scorer, John Drew, who is sidelined with a sprained ankle. And the Hawks lead it by five. They did that, Frank, on hustle and desire and determination and... Uh... You have to give Hubie Brown some credit, too. He's doing a super job of coaching right now. He's putting in players, and uh, he's mixing it up very well. There was a foul. Just uh, I wasn't quite sure of that before the timeout. This is John Brown on the free throw line. The foul was against Lloyd Walton, his third. I'll tell you, the big difference in the end is going to come down to free throws because Milwaukee is going to outfield goal. Atlanta by a bunch. Myers. Inside to Aikens. Bucks are down by seven. They throw it away, get it back. And let's see what happens. Kicking the ball. Well, they're trying to move the ball around. I think they're looking for something inside, and uh, they're going to have to get that, too, and get it in a hurry. Brian Winters, who's had difficulty hitting here in the second half. He was five out of seven from the field in the first half. But has only one basket in the second half of play. They've done a pretty good job on it. Marcus Johnson. Shot clock down to 10 seconds. Walton. Ooh. Got nothing as far oh. as the rim goes. And Hawes grabs yet another rebound. Well, he is close to his career high in rebounds. Yeah, he's got uh, 17 rebounds right now. I think he needs one more for his career, which is 18. And uh, the man's just had a super job today. He did a fine job for him. Had some timely buckets, too. Foul called on Walton. No, no, it's going the other way. I'm on Hill. Here he is. He's backing him. Watch him hook him right here. He see he's got his arm here. Now, nah, there you go. There's a foul right there. Right. You cannot do that. Armand Hill has fouled out of the game. 
played fine, though. He did a, well, a very good job for him. Eddie Johnson comes in. A minute 45 left to play, and Milwaukee trailing by seven. So the Bucks need to put it up fast and put it up often. Winners just can't hit that shot. Gets it back again. Still can't hit it. Myers fighting for the rebound. Saves it. And the foul is on Myers. We're moving into Eddie Johnson. Here he goes. Myers gets a rebound, but the man had already established a point. And I think Myers might be just a little weak and coming off the bench now and trying to make a big, strong move. Just a little anxious. Bucks have two players on the bench via the foul route. Gianelli and Grunfeld. Armand Hill is fouled out. Hubie Brown is on his feet in front of the uh, Atlanta bench, shouting at Chris. Instructions. Chris going one on one here with Walton. They're going to eat up as much time as they can. They're down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Chris gets it away and hits it, but the bucket will not count. And the foul, I believe, is going to be on Chris for elbowing. And they called him for an offensive foul on that. <laughs> there we go. He beats a man right here. He beats Walton. We're watching jump right back into him with the body. But they say that the offensive ball player has the advantage. Winners comes up with a quick basket for the Milwaukee Bucks. One minute, four seconds left to play, and the Bucks are going to call time here as they have trimmed the lead to five points. But anything can still happen, certainly, in one minute and four seconds. It's an awful lot of time. I guess we got to start thinking about most valuable players. You got any candidates at this uh, particular point yet? Uh, there are a couple of that are very eligible for it, but uh, I don't want to say anything now because, like you said just a minute ago, this game can go either way. I've got a couple on one team, a couple on another team, and I'm sure that you've got yours, and uh, I'm sure our producer does too. You're going to be sneaky about it and make everybody wait till the very end. <laughs> well, it could go either way. Exactly. That's the type of basketball game it's been, and we will be back with the concluding finish. Just a moment. Good job. This Wednesday, Captain Nemo confronts evil nuclear undersea pirates. Be there for the explosion. Then see Hollywood's brightest stars as the American Film Institute presents its Life Achievement Award to Mr. Henry Fonda, right after the return of Captain Nemo, starting Wednesday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. And we welcome you back to the Omni in Atlanta. You know, I wanted that line back as soon as I said it. The concluding finish. You don't have a concluding finish. You have an exciting finish, and that's yeah. what we've got. Yeah, you have an exciting conclusion. Thank you can you. have that, <laughs> but not a concluding finish or a finishing conclusion. <laughs> anyway, it's been an interesting afternoon of basketball here from the Omni in Atlanta. Both these teams, obviously, with excellent shots at the playoffs, both trying to extend those chances a bit further with a victory today boy it is tough on the road isn't it it is it's hard that's because uh there's just so, too many things that are in your way you know like the fans the travel the practice people think it's a life of pleasure though our producer today tom o'neill and our director john mcdenna we thank these gentlemen for their work Gail Bledsoe, our associate producer. Atlanta will have the ball. The other folks here who helped bring our production to you. Got a final. Philadelphia beat Boston 105-103, and Cleveland beat Indiana 95-90. Bucks need the ball. Hawks playing keep away. 50 seconds to go. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Charlie Chris. Driving on Marcus Johnson right up the alley, and Hawes drops it in. Boy, you don't think at 5'8", Charlie Chris can play? He's electrifying. I mean, it's just things like that that look at this. They let this get away, though. Cross court. Akins hitting his first basket of the afternoon. Five-point lead for Atlanta, 34 seconds. Back court. Johnson took a pretty good shot on the leg there. Ollie Johnson did, and he is limping slightly. So a penalty situation here, and with the backcourt, he gets three, right? Yeah, it does. Two for three, and this kind of hurts, too. And uh, Brian has had a very tough uh, ending coming down this stretch. He hasn't been able to hit it well. He's committed numerous fouls already now. 22nd injury timeout for Atlanta as they take a look at Ollie Johnson's leg. Looks like uh, he got kicked in the calf muscle there. Yeah, that can be painful, too. You were always tough, Gus. You never used to 
take these injury time. They didn't have oh, injury timeouts, did buddy. they? We, in, in my day, they didn't allow you to take injury timeouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say you just go out and guts it. Play it on guts. 34 seconds left. Atlanta leading by five. Holly Johnson is an 84% free throw shooter. He's two out of two from the free throw line. Been a big difference this afternoon. The free throw shooting, Atlanta with a big advantage. I still question the move of putting Myers into the ball game instead of Benson. He hadn't played all game, and uh, well, maybe he thought that might be the fire that would light it or something, the spark that would light his fire. I don't know. Man looks weak. He's, you know, he's, he's tired. He has to be. So Atlanta leading Milwaukee by seven as the Bucks call timeout to discuss the strategy with 34 seconds left to play. Believe it or not, that's enough time to still win this basketball game, you know? I think we have to go ahead and do it. Huh? You want to go ahead and make your selection? for It's most already in. Player? We already agreed. All right. <laughs> We're going to give it to Steve Hawes, right? Right. Okay. Definitely. So the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award will go to Steve Hawes for his not only fine scoring, but uh, he's right up as far as his career rebounding goes with what, 17 at last report? 17 rebounds, 16 points. So the Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to the University of Washington on behalf of Steve Oz. I've had some of the players ask me, why don't they get the $1,000? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Oz has just 34 seconds left to play and if Don Nelson's got any seven point plays in his bag you better come up with them now. It's going to take more than that I think. Steve Hawes six feet eight inches and he can go up there with the best of them I'll tell you he, he uses that that height you don't find too many six eight centers in the NBA. No you don't plus uh, what he does well is that uh, he positions well you know and he knows that there are guys that are leapers that can out jump him, but that position is so important to all these young viewers that are wanting to be excellent rebounders like the Uncells, the Jabars. Well, you have to learn how to block the man out. The man cannot climb over your back. He cannot go around you if he's screened off well. All right, Bucks will get the ball out of bounds at midcourt, and Dave Myers will throw it in. They're down by seven with 34 seconds to go. They get it into Winters. 20-footer by Winters. He has had his problems here in the second half. Comes up with the follow-through. John Brown to Hawes. Oh, boy. Oh, they better get the ball. Eddie Johnson driving for the hoop. Passes off to Ollie Johnson. And Johnson applies the coup de grace. <laughs> he just put a little icing on the cake. Hardy's over. Marcus Johnson with 13 seconds left missing. Marcus is 28 points. And the smallest man on the floor, Charlie Chris, comes down with the rebound but fell out of bounds, struggling <laughs> to maintain possession. I and don't know if you want to say he was struggling or fell out of bounds. Looks like he was knocked out of bounds. Marcus Johnson. Well, our most valuable player has just picked up a personal foul. <laughs> so the foul is on Hawes, and going to the free throw line will be Aikens. Four seconds left, and Atlanta with a seven point lead, and they'll have beaten the Bucks for the second time in three starts. Bucks get a chance for revenge a week from Tuesday night when Atlanta comes to the Milwaukee Arena. And I'm sure that they'll be looking forward to that, too, after this here, after commanding the first half so easily. 98 93, two seconds, one second, there it is. So a fine comeback by Atlanta in the second half gives them the victory over the Milwaukee Bucks 98-93. Frank Lieber for Gus Johnson saying so long from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Coming up next, the fourth and final round of the Durant Open where the leader is Tom Weisskopf at 15 under par. That's coming up next right here on CBS. The NBA on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. This is CBS.